The diagnosis, like in venous malformations, is clinical. Sometimes we need imaging, um, and it's important when we look at these lesions to know which ones do we need to image and when do we need to image. All these are lymphatic malformations. This is a very typical skin involvement called infantiosa circumscripta. And on ultrasound, if we do easily define the micro and macrocysts, microcysts are less than one centimeter, macrocysts more than uh, one centimeter. Here's an ultrasound scan showing various sizes of cysts. Here's a mixed lymphatic malformation with a large cyst, a macrocyst, smaller microcysts. Sometimes the cysts bleed and the fluid becomes much more hyperreflective because of the blood, which over time forms a retracted clot against the wall of the cyst. When you sometimes uh, see microcystic disease, you can't always, on ultrasound, see the cysts because the cysts are actually too small, and what you see are sheets of actually echogenic or hyperreflective tissue. On, um, M on MRI, the uh, appearance depends on whether we're actually looking at a macrocystic disease or microcystic. In this child, this child's got a macrocyst here on T1. You can see it's hypo-intense, bright on T2, and the walls tend to enhance in macrocysts, whereas in microcysts, the tissue is hypo-intense on T1, diffusely hyper-intense on T2 in this expanded lesion in the forearm. And on the contrasted T1, we used to think that microcystic disease didn't enhance, but actually, I think most cases now give a very faint enhancement. If you have mixed disease, then you get, a, you get changes which reflect the mixed nature of the malformation. When you image on MRI in this thigh, for example, there are large and small cysts which are bright on T2, causing some wall enhancement on, on post-contrast of the larger macrocysts and more ill-defined diffuse enhancement in microcystic disease. And this child has also got mixed disease. There's a single macrocyst here and a smaller macrocyst here, but much of the disease is microcystic disease in the arm. So there are some conditions, people always talk about combined venous and, and, and lymphatic malformations. These are combinations that are extremely rare. But here in this child with this giant lymphatic malformation, which is a mixed lymphatic malformation, actually here's the MRI showing these large cysts, but there are lots of microcystic disease as well. You can see these dysplastic appearances on the which was done from both arms, showing enlargement of the axillary veins, stenoses around the subclavians, and venous aneurysms as well. And in this child's forearm, where there's a subcutaneous microcystic disease, which also involves the hand, when we do a venogram through the hand, you can see these ectasia to the veins. So this is what we mean when we see combined venous and lymphatic malformations. So finally, I want to just briefly mention about arteriovenous malformations, which are different to the slow flow, because these are hemodynamically active. So the actual underlying lesion is called the nidus. It's a precapillary shunt. If we look at a diagrammatic representation of the circulation, these nidi occur at a precapillary level. So the arteries taking blood to them are often enlarged, ectatic. They're shunting through the nidi, which obviously increases the venous return. You get changes on the venous side of the circulation with enlargement of the veins. And in fact, ultimately, if the shunting is large, you can actually get cardiac failure as well. AVMs present at birth. Sometimes they're not evident until puberty. Um, you can diagnose these if they're in an extremity, for example, if they're, if they're superficial. But the basic lesion is the nidus. And <coughs> what we look for clinically is to see evidence of the effects of the, uh, height of the um, shunting. And we can see uh, prominent veins, for example, in this hand. This little expansion here due to uh, actually arterial aneurysms. And you can see how changes progress in this uh, one girl who at 12 years of age, the little finger and the middle finger were slightly expanded, but over four years you can see this being significant change, particularly to the little finger. There are some triggers with arteriovenous malformations which can worsen the condition. Puberty is one trigger, pregnancy is another trigger, and the third common trigger is trauma. So if a child with an AVM has trauma to the affected part involving the AVM, the AVM can significantly deteriorate and you can get worse shunting. So what do we do for AVMs? Well, this is, I'm not going to talk about what we actually do, but in fact, you don't need to do diagnostic angiography unless you're going to embark upon treatment. That's the first message. 
You can do MR angiography, but really the gold standard is still a catheter angiogram. You can find the NIDI. Here's a girl whose left arm is longer, forearm is larger. If you feel this arm, it's actually hotter and warmer. And in fact, in this child with an AVM in the finger, you can see this finger is significantly larger than the adjacent fingers. This increased size to the arteries going to that finger compared to the arteries going to the normal finger and early draining veins and actually the nidi are around here within the soft tissue. But we don't do angiography unless we're actually deciding to do treatment. I think I just want to uh, come to uh, close here because uh, the one question that's always asked is, well, what's the difference between arterial venous malformation and arterial venous fistula? The simple answer is, in fistulas, you don't have nidi. You have a direct connection without a nidal bed. Here's a fistula in a little girl who actually um, developed progress, slight enlargement, which was progressive over the nose here. And this is her angiogram showing shunting, you can see from the from the facial artery injection on onto the venous side. And although there's this lesion here, it does not classically look like a nidus at all. And, and, and so the difference between AVMs and AVFs is in AVFs there's no nidus.